Thank you. So good morning, everybody. I'm very honored to have these uh, 10 minutes of introduction. Usually in a conference, you get uh, sold some kind of uh, promotion. In this case, uh, we will try actually to uh, stimulate some uh, criticism and critical thinking and some skepticism even. Uh, what, uh, what my presentation is about is uh, why everything they told you about Bitcoin is a lie. Uh, of course, some of you in the audience are pretty expert in this matter. Some of you may not be. And uh, it's important to clarify before we start uh, getting into depth uh, with this topic that uh, there is not just uh, a lot of uh, uh, lack of information. There is a lot of uh, uh, absolutely wrong information. Uh, basically, there is uh, not just uh, a lot of noise, but a lot of negative signal in Bitcoin. So most of the things, uh, uh, if you approach it Bitcoin mostly from the point of view of reading some article on the mainstream media, uh, probably everything you have been told is uh, kind of a lie. Let's call it a, a, a misconception. Uh, so I am, let's see if it works. Yeah. So I am, uh, I'm in Bitcoin, since I'm a theoretical physicist as education. I'm in Bitcoin since 2013. And what I do is mostly uh, consultancy also to banks and institutions and uh, recently, especially education. You can find me at uh, uh, Giacomo Zuc on Twitter or, or whatever, Telegram. Uh, so uh, the press, the general press gets Bitcoin wrong. Uh, mostly for uh, these reasons, because uh, the press generally gets wrong things that are too new. Uh, there is a, there, they need some time in order to understand what's going on if something is, is new. Bitcoin may seem old, old story, like 10 years, but actually if you think about that, uh, I mean, uh, the, the first uh, experiments with the Internet Protocol were in, this, in the 70s, and in the 80s the general press did, that, did, did not have any clue about the uh, Internet, uh, not even in the 90s actually. Uh, and uh, press is generally wrong and bad with things that are too technical. Bitcoin uh, is technical not just in a technological sense, but also in an economical sense. It's a very subtle game of uh, cryptography, applied cryptography, information security, game theory, uh, monetary economics, and monetary history. So it's difficult to, to get it right. It's also very multidisciplinary. Uh, if you are a great cryptographer, but you don't understand money, probably you get Bitcoin way less than somebody who has a good understanding of the purposes of money and the history of money, but uh, maybe uh, is clueless about cryptography. But then the second guy will uh, understand Bitcoin, but will lose all his Bitcoin because he, he doesn't understand how to store a key. So uh, you have to stay somehow in, in between. Uh, uh, general press is also kind of bad uh, at, uh, at explaining things that hurt uh, uh, too many interests. Uh, Bitcoin is disruptive, not uh, like, uh, yeah, we are disruptive startup, we are creating a new PayPal. It is disruptive in a way that if it works, could play out as very, very disruptive. So uh, the, the kind of uh, status quo, I mean, I know that this sounds a little bit like a paranoid uh, tinfoil hat uh, the, uh, conspiracy theory, but uh, the, the, in the real world, uh, there are uh, established interests and there is a cognitive bias to uh, try to not understand the, co the, the, new, uh, the new things if the new things are threatening your interest a lot. Maybe individuals can understand things that threaten their business model, but organizations, for example, tend not to understand. Uh, I mean, Kodak usually cannot understand uh, digital pictures even if the single Kodak, Kodak researchers do. Uh, Blockbuster will not understand uh, video streaming online even if a single researcher can understand it inside Blockbuster. So as organizations, Organizations usually uh, uh, establish interests tend to be kind of uh, uh, tend to, to get uh, wrong things that can threaten uh, their interest. Also, uh, Bitcoin is a thing that, they, that can create too much uh, economic interest, too much economic attention because uh, uh, there is money to be made. Some people got rich, uh, some people uh, got uh, got wrecked, some some people got millionaire. So uh, everybody wants to sell you something. Uh, everybody wants your money. There is uh, basically a, a gold rush, and during a gold rush, uh, scammers are everywhere, 
and uh, and of course if you are a, a, if you read a, a newspaper article you are reading a, a, something from a journalist that was basically exposed to a lot of uh, snake oil salesmen and a lot of uh, a lot of fraudsters uh, also general press is wrong in general uh, if you are expert uh, you know there is something called the the um, the um, uh, Murray Gelman, um, um, uh, like uh, for, uh, forgetting amnesia. Uh, if you are an expert in anything and you read something about that, you understand that the, the general press is terrible at explaining that, and mostly it tells uh, everything uh, upside down. But then you you turn the page, you you read something you are not a specific expert in, and then you get back believing it, like after just one page. It is a typical uh, phenomenon. So in Bitcoin, that's even worse. So uh, what, uh, what can you do to mitigate the level of noise or even to uh, not just to uh, learn something about Bitcoin, but to unlearn everything you, you learn so far, which is wrong. Uh, basically, you have to become a little bit an expert yourself. Unfortunately, in this kind, I mean, delegation for, uh, for, for knowledge is a good thing. It's, it's good to delegate experts. It's something that uh, we have to do. It's a division of labor. It's OK. Uh, but with something which is so new, so disruptive, so complex, uh, you, don't have this, uh, uh, you don't have this excuse uh, uh, anymore. You have to uh, try to verify claims. You have to try to fact check directly. So it's, uh, it's hard. Uh, you cannot easily delegate experts because you don't know who the experts are. The definition of experts is still circular. Like uh, uh, one expert will tell you that the other expert is a fraud and vice versa, and they're both right. Uh, so uh, it's kind of difficult to navigate. Uh, one, one very good clue that I can give you is uh, consider the long run. Uh, try to get back to ancient history like 2014, uh, try to verify claim also in the long run. So everybody, I mean, every kind of uh, blockchain technology works uh, in the demo phase. Uh, none of them works basically except one in the, in the long run. So uh, when, you, when you are facing a claim, you should try not just to verify the, the technical side of it, but also the historical side. Uh, what, what, which other claims like that has been, has been uh, made uh, in 2011? Uh, how many claims did that person uh, uh, made, b make before that one? So usually uh, time is a, is a gentleman. And if you look at the big picture in the long run, you can start to, to tell fraudsters from, uh, uh, from real researchers. Uh, this is all you can do, basically. I will try to, um, to list uh, some uh, FPM, frequently propagated myths, about Bitcoin. Uh, I will not try to debunk them now. Uh, so uh, now you have to trust me. But then during the day, or not, but then during the day, you will, uh, you will basically verify. Uh, the first myth I would like to, well, I will just basically list them. First myth, which is the complete opposite of reality. Blockchain as a technology is fast, cheap, and encrypted, so you can use it to protect your data. Actually, blockchain is a technology that Bitcoin has to use, is necessary for Bitcoin layer one, but it is extremely slow, extremely expensive, extremely expensive, and it's not encrypted at all. Basically, it's, uh, everybody has all the data with zero data protection. So blockchain is terrible for, uh, for, uh, for the efficiency of your banking track record. It's terrible for privacy. It's terrible for, uh, for uh, easiness and, uh, and efficiency. Uh, also, there is this meme going around blockchain validate information. Uh, that's not the case. Blockchains do not validate information. Blockchain only creates uh, a relative chronology of information that can be true or false, right or wrong. So everybody using blockchain to validate uh, supply chain in food. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, blockchain is the real deal. It's not. 99% uh, 90, 90 of research in Bitcoin right now is how to avoid using the blockchain. So what Bitcoin researchers are trying to do now is to use Bitcoin without using the blockchain or using the blockchain only uh, when it's strictly needed and st stay out of the blockchain every time we can with something like Lightning Network, Mast, uh, Taproot, uh, Script uh, Script. Uh, all these technical buzzwords just mean one thing. We shouldn't use the blockchain if we can avoid it. Uh, so uh, tokens 
uh, are decentralized, trustless, and anonymous. So everything you couldn't do before when you do an IPO or when you do your uh, public offer, uh, because it's maybe it's uh, regulatory is uh, restricted from a regulatory point of view. Now with tokens, you can because tokens are unstoppable. Uh, they are decentralized. There is no single point of failure. They are not. With the exception of one single token, which is called Bitcoin, uh, any other experiment out there is fairly centralized around a single team of development, uh, around uh, a marketing team especially, with their face uh, around. So it's totally centralized. The typical website uh, promoting um, unstoppable application right now, uh, the Ethereum Foundation website, basically it's about a technology where they did stop several applications when they wanted to stop them. So it's, uh, it's not about tokens. Uh, also, tokens tokens add value to the platform. This is a typical crypto mantra. So we are doing a new, uh, we're doing a, like a, a new Tinder application, but with tokens. Uh, usually tokens, when you put them in your application, they reduce the efficiency of your application and they introduce new friction because now you have to take real money, you have to buy this useless token, and you have to spend this token in order to use something that you could use in the first place without the token. So tokens are not a magic powder to increase uh, the, the business effectiveness of your application. Usually they are just a friction, a friction point uh, that, uh, that has a one purpose, buying Lamborghini for the creator of the token. Uh, tokenization. <laughs> Uh, as, uh, people clapping as, as a, Lam have a Lamborghini, all, all of them, I know, I know that. <laughs> so the other, another myth I can list is that Bitcoin is only for bad people. Uh, so Bitcoin is a, is a dodgy thing for the, for the dark markets, uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, the only thing. Uh, that's not the case. Bitcoin is actually uh, the first asset class uh, which is uh, entirely uh, independent from political risk is the first as if it works I mean, I, I have been told there are some skeptics and that's very good. Uh, we have to be I'm also skeptical about Bitcoin uh, I, I know that Bitcoin could fail what uh, what comforts me is that I know that everything else will fail but uh, <laughs> So in comparison, but uh, but still Bitcoin is still an experiment uh, and it's not just for bad people. For example, it's a, it's a non-correlated asset. Uh, you can uh, you can try to co you can try to do a, s a scientific study of correlation with Bitcoin and physical gold. Bi bi Bitcoin is a little bit like digital physical gold, but it's also like a brand because gold doesn't have a, have a brand. Like if they rob a gold deposit, it's not that gold price goes down because there is a brand damage. While uh, in Bitcoin there is a brand uh, situation. It's a technology. Gold cannot really evolve technologically. Uh, you cannot say, I mean, gold will go up because we have the Lightning Network. Now, in Bitcoin, there is a technological advancement uh, a perception. So it's a mix of very different things. Uh, and uh, and it's behaving differently. So uh, if you want to, uh, basically, when you compose a portfolio and you want to manage your risk, the uh, uh, correlation is something useful, not just for uh, the dark market criminals, but also for, um, for investors and institutions. Uh, Bitcoin is actually not really anti-banks, uh, for other reasons we will discuss it a bit later, is mostly unfortunately anti-central banks. I mean, if you are a banker, uh, you can still uh, make a lot of business around Bitcoin. If you are a central banker, I mean, learn to code, do something. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, so Bitcoin is not only for bad people. There are uh, also, my, there are a lot of, uh, but Bitcoin is not even the opposite. Like somebody wants to sell you Bitcoin as the transparent ledger that the, fi the world finance will use because it's completely legal, completely compliance. It's not. Bitcoin is a beer, is, uh, is a beer instrument and as such can facilitate uh, legal arbitrage or even illegal things. That's a fact. Well, whenever you see some, you, you hear somebody denying that fact like, oh no, everything is, is, is a, is, uh, is uh, on the blockchain, uh, we can tra trace everything forever, uh, is uh, lying or om omitting something. Bitcoin can be used for regulatory arbitrage and for illegal things. Uh, the good news is that not all illegal things are uh, bad things. Basically, every single action you uh, perform since this morning waking up uh, is illegal in some place of the earth uh, from drinking, uh, well, probably you don't drink alcohol in the morning, but from, uh, I don't know if coffee is illegal, but I'm, I'm sure it was illegal sometimes somewhere. So every action is illegal and especially many, many actions that we do are 
uh, illegal. So there are a lot of people that are in the gray, so-called gray market, which is people that are not doing anything strange. They are not selling drugs. They are not uh, trying to organize terrorist attacks. They maybe want to sell lemonade, but they don't have the specific permission to do that uh, in some kind of jurisdiction. Uh, and to, to be more, more, more explicit, uh, there is the, uh, the absolute majority of people on planet Earth right now, they don't have access to a KYC-like identity for international finance or international commerce. So when you use e-commerce or e-banking, you have to know that, yeah, you know very well, that the, the total majority of people on this planet cannot be compliant with this kind of requirement. So it's like a, a privilege requirement, uh, which, is, uh, which is not accessible for most people. Uh, Bitcoin is accessible to everybody. If you are a woman in Afghanistan and you cannot have a bank account, you can have a Bitcoin address and nobody can actually stop you. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not for regulatory compliance. It's a beer as instrument. It means that uh, it can be, for example, uh, it, it also changes the security assumption because uh, when you are uh, storing in your bank uh, some kind of financial derivatives, they are not beer instruments. So uh, no single employee can, can steal a derivative contract easily and, uh, and hid it uh, in, uh, in its pocket. With Bitcoin, it's a little bit like uh, gold bars. So people can get away with that. Uh, also, uh, there is this myth that everybody will be their own banks. That's, uh, that's maybe something uh, uh, approximable in the long run, but uh, for the short run, many people will use Bitcoin speculatively without uh, uh, wanting to become hackers or, or uh, cryptography exp experts. So there will be a lot of intermediation in Bitcoin, mostly on the uh, financial investment side, a little bit less in the direct use side. Uh, people who want to uh, use Bitcoin directly to avoid some kind of regulation or to, to arbitrage some kind of regulation, they will mostly have to learn how to do that because uh, any counterparty will be easily censored. But people who want to speculate, which is, a, which is not a bad word, uh, on, this, uh, on this technology uh, uh, um, disruption, uh, they will mostly use a third party, which in my opinion will not be uh, Bitcoin startups, but they will be uh, mostly traditional banks. Um, also, uh, so one myth is everybody is its own bank his own bank. The opposite myth is uh, these Chinese miners control Bitcoin, they control everything. Actually, even just when you read the newspaper that uh, miners validate Bitcoin, so you, you search for, you Google Bitcoin right now, you get some video where you have uh, some guy spending Bitcoin on a mobile phone and then a network of miners validating it. That's a myth, that's not how it works. Miners do not validate. Most of the people running miners, they just uh, use uh, the node of a central pool to validate it. Don't, they don't validate themselves, while every single Bitcoin user User, in order to be sure he has been paid, he has to validate independently. So validation in Bitcoin is not something delegated to mining, mining farms. Only, do, only things that mining farms do is to create a, a, an opportunity cost for reversing the history. But they can only ordinate valid transaction. The validation of transaction is not something miners do. Miners cannot change the rule of Bitcoin. They are not in control. Uh, okay, I go faster. Uh, one typical myth is Bitcoin is too scarce, so it will work, but there is not enough uh, of them, like just 21 million. Of course, many people is still uh, uh, scared. Uh, they, they still don't get the divisibility, and they are still affected by unit bias. Like, there are not enough Bitcoin for everybody. Uh, that's not the case. And the opposite myth is Bitcoin is too niche. No, nobody really wants it, so it will fail because there is no interest. Uh, last, uh, last two myths, uh, Bitcoin will be hacked and fail. Like there is a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, there is a lot of uh, uh, overestimation of uh, technical threat to Bitcoin and a lot of underestimation of the level of security of Bitcoin technically, uh, or Bitcoin will work and boil the oceans. Uh, so basically the world will be destroyed because Bitcoin will, will work too much. A very good heuristic is, if somebody is telling you that Bitcoin cannot work because it will uh, simultaneously boil the ocean because too much, uh, too much effective and be hacked and become ineffective, uh, I mean, uh, he will. He has to choose, right? Uh, either either it doesn't work or it worked too much. Uh, so uh, this is just a, well. I, I will skip this because it's late. And uh, this will is where you can find me on some like Twitter or Telegram if you have some question. And uh, have a nice day and uh, uh, to the moon.